Speed ramping. A lot of people use it in their videos. But is it overused? Is it overdone? Well, I'm gonna show you how to actually create a beautiful speed ramp in today's video using Final Cut Pro. So I'm gonna show you a project that I just wrapped up with Michael Hearn and a company called S-Force Watches. So here's what the promo video looks like. So in that clip, there were actually multiple speed ramps. There's a few techniques that I wanna go over and how to actually edit it to make it seamless, especially when you're showcasing a product. So here's my Final Cut Pro timeline. As you can see, it's pretty massive, but we're only gonna be covering this section right here where I showcase each of the uh, watches in his collection. And we're also gonna be talking about this shot right here where we have Michael Hearn coming down the stairs and then this is all speed ramped and we have them walking into the kitchen right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a new project. So file, new project. And this was done in 4K, so we're gonna leave it at 4K. Now, there were a few techniques that I used when shooting these shots. First of all, I was handheld, no gimbal was used. Actually, only like one or two shots where Mike was walking, I used a gimbal, but everything else was basically handheld, especially when it came to the up close product shots. So, handheld, filmed it at 120 frames per second. Now, this question I get asked a lot how do you edit with multiple different frame rates within a 24 frames per second timeline? I made a full comprehensive tutorial just on that. Make sure you watch this video right here because that's gonna show you everything you need to know about editing with different frame rates. Rule of thumb is, is that I like to slow everything down to a 24 frames per second timeline. So for example, if I shot this clip at 120 frames per second, I need to slow it down to 80% in order to match a 24 frames per second timeline. Again, watch that video if you don't know what I'm talking about. And this is the raw clip. Actually, let me slow it down first before I do anything. Slow it down to 80%. That way it won't play back choppy. And then I want to make sure that I extend the clip. Perfect. Okay, so let's just play it back. Okay. So you'll notice that the clip is a little bit jumpy, it's a little bit rocky, but again, we did not slow it down to 20%. That's super slow-mo for 120 frames per second. That is the speed that I want it slowed down to. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna be doing. So make sure that the clip is highlighted, go to your speed retimer, which is right here. I'm actually gonna go to custom and just type in 20%. Now this is the maximum amount of slow motion that you can get with 120 frames per second. So 20%, press on enter. I'm gonna expand the clip as far as it goes. There we go. And now let's play back the clip. This was also shot in manual focus. So notice how there's no focus hunting and no focus breathing. We pass by each of the watches and we see that beautiful reflection on the surface of each watch. So that's really important when you're showcasing a product like a watch. So this is basically what I did. There's a little tool called speed ramping in Final Cut Pro. There's multiple ways on how to do this, but the most efficient, the most smooth way in doing this is by hitting the shift and B key at the same time. So basically I'm gonna go up to the point where I see the watch. So right about here, 
I'm gonna hit Shift B, and you'll notice that the speed retimer or blade tool right here, which is what it's called in Final Cut, is split. So now this section of the clip can be retimed at a different speed compared to the rest of the clip. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on this drop down arrow right here. I'm gonna go to fast and I'm gonna put in four times. So let's see what four times looks like. See that speed retimer right there? It's very quick, right? But I don't really like that because as soon as that speed ramp ends, the watch is still out of focus. So let me undo that. And let me undo it one more time. And let me actually go up to the point where the watch goes into focus, which is right about there, I would say. So I'm gonna hit Shift B one more time. I'm gonna go to the drop down arrow, go to fast, and let's see what eight times looks like. Make it a little bit faster. That's a little bit too fast, but we can zoom in and we can drag out this blue bar right here and we can slow it down just a tad. You'll notice that the percentage down here starts to go down. Or we can just go to the arrow and type in our own custom number. So I'm gonna put 500%. A little bit slower, let's go to 400%. Nice, I like that. Now there's another little part of the blade tool that's really important to understand. You see this little gray bar here that kind of overlaps the orange? That is basically the transition from a high speed ramp to a low speed ramp. So we're going from high to fast and it's slowly going to slow down into 20%. So it's kind of like a crossfade, but for speed. So you can always adjust this gray bar. You can make the crossover to slower speed shorter, or you can make it longer if you want it to be a little bit more seamless and smoother. Now on top of this speed ramp, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a motion blur. So a motion blur is exactly how it sounds. Anything that has high motion or fast motion, I should say, is going to be blurry. So I have some presets here for motion blur uh, made by Ryan Nangle, and you can actually download those motion blur presets. I'll leave a link to it in my description box, so make sure you check that out. And don't worry guys, these motion blur plugins are absolutely free from Ryan Nangle, so Big shout out to Ryan Angle, thank you so much. He's probably one of the best uh, Final Cut Pro users there are, and uh, or editors, I should say, so definitely check him out. So I'm gonna go to the 24 motion blur, since we shot this at 24 frames per second. I'm gonna go ahead and place it over the blue because that's where all of our speed is happening, our high fast speed. <laughs> and if you notice, our image is gonna be very blurry until it slows back down. Now, because this isn't rendered, it's gonna play back very choppy, but actually it's not bad, but it's going to be pretty blurry until it slows back down. And what this does is it allows us to create a much smoother effect when speed ramping. And all we're gonna do for the rest of the clip is the same exact thing going from watch to watch. Now let's go ahead and bring up the second example that I had lined up for this video. So here's the original clip. This was actually shot at 24 frames per second on a gimbal. I just had the gimbal pointing directly to the ceiling and it came out pretty smooth as it is, but as you can tell, it's actually a very long shot. So similar to the watches that I just edited for you guys, we are actually going to make this a little bit more exciting. So we're gonna start off the shot with a little bit of an orbit or a circle and then we're gonna engage the speed ramp. So shift B, and then I'm gonna speed ramp it all the way up until he comes back into frame right about here. And then I'm gonna hit shift B again to close off that speed ramp. And then we're gonna go to fast and let's see what 4X looks like. That looks pretty good. Now all we need to do is add a little bit of motion blur. I'm just gonna copy and paste the motion blur that we used before. And then we're just gonna extend it over that blue bar just so it 
covers up that whole entire fast motion there. And then let's play it back. So speed ramping is a really good tool to help out with telling your story, but please don't overuse speed ramping. It should only be used in certain sequences where it can really help engage and, and tell your story even better. And of course, motion blur just adds that more seamless and that smoother effect to it, just so people can't really tell that the shot is really sped up that much, and it also covers up any jerky movements. So thank you guys so much for watching. If this video has helped you out, subscribe with those notifications turned on, and I'll see you in the next video.